Okay, so <clears throat> I actually decided to do a a shout out, if you will, because I been watching this one YouTuber for a while that I really enjoy watching. Of course, I'm jaded because I love glass. This guy is good at an old school technique of glass called lace work, lace working, or uh, spinning. I've heard it called also. And it's a very traditional school of borosilicate flame working. And it actually was done in the Italian school too, but with the softer glasses. But this guy is really good at it. I just remember one of the most vivid memories I have in California. So it was probably just before my family moved out of the area. Uh, was going to Knott's Berry Farm and watching guys behind big shields of glass and these men and women would take glass rods like this and they would sculpt things that you you just couldn't believe they were doing it with nothing but a rod of glass when I first saw it I wanted I begged my parents I was a kid and I begged my parents to let me try it and of course my parents weren't about to set up uh, oxygenated propane torch on the, you know, and have me go at it at five to six years old. So here I am in my thirties and I'm addicted to this art. And now that I've rambled on long enough, I would like everybody that sees this video to go check out what I think is probably one of the coolest YouTubers and it always picks up my day when I get to watch one of his videos. He's called Sunfire Glass and he's pretty cool. And I'm going to post this as a video response to a video he just made where he made a spun glass Christmas tree. And as my artist contribution, since I can't spin worth a poopy, I'm going to do an ornament for your Christmas tree. Assuming that I don't run out of propane, because it may happen, I'm pretty low on propane. You didn't see that. I used this. This is what I use to light that torch. Okay, so now I've got my wrap and I've got my rakes. I've got to melt this into one continuous, smooth, beautiful piece of glass. I'm also picky too. I try to always use a punty that's approximately the same diameter as the point or blowpipe that I'm working with so that I can really monitor what's going on with rotation between the two hands. And there I have what I call a color blank. I mean all of the color work has been done to this piece now. All of the colors have been put into the glass, all of the striping, the shaping of the colors, the raking. So now I have a piece of glass that I can turn into something and I'm going to turn it into a Christmas ornament. It's very important on an ornament loop that you allow the ornament to cool enough that it's not sucking air in as you're sealing the loop. Uh, if you hurry, it, and it sounds great to have a vacuum inside the ornament, but there is a major problem that if there's enough vacuum forming while the glass is still in its transition stage, it can be pulled down and create a little mound with really sharp corners that create stress risers that cause the ornament to break right at the loop, which is why most of the cheap manufactured stuff dies. Now also, we're talking about real ornament loops, as you're going to see. We're not talking about the little tinny things that the Chinese manufacturing companies went to to go on the top. We actually, a real, a good glass artist will be making his loops that hold the ornament itself out of glass as well. It should be one unified piece of work. And before I break it off the Plenty. I'll let you all take a good look at it. This is an acroduster ornament. But there you go, there is a wrap and rake blue exotic Christmas ornament for Sunfire's Christmas tree. And I'm going to have a lot of editing to do because I manage 